So this morning, we will be looking at uh, 1 John as we continue to make our way. Do you remember what word John mentions a lot in this book? I've said it over and over and over again, love. Love, and that's what this is about. It's, it's all about love, what, what it is, what it isn't, what we as believers should do or shouldn't do. And as we've been going through this, we've been asking ourselves a question. Are you saved? Which you should ask yourself, am I saved? And we've talked about what what Christians should do, what they shouldn't do. And as we've been working our way through the book of 1 John, hopefully you've been able to look at what you believe, what you do, to really internalize and hopefully give you security in what you believe because what you say you believe and what you actually believe, can they be two different things? Yes. Like we could say, I believe that eating healthy is is good and I'm going to do it. And I should do it. But do you actually believe that? Because when a a cheeseburger comes along your way, you know what, this isn't going to hurt. It's really not that bad. And so what we say we believe, or even what we, what we say we know we believe, and, and what we do, sometimes they're, they're different. But what you do really shows what you believe. And last week, we talked about true love. Today, we're going to be talking about what love does. Because what does love do? What, what does it mean when you tell somebody that you love them, do they believe you? They will if your actions prove it. But if you say you, uh, I love you just to somebody and your actions don't back up your words, are they going to believe you? Probably not. Probably not. And so that's what we're looking at today is what love does. Because we've been talking about it. another theme that John chooses, you know, talks about. It's not just love, but who are we to love? fellow believers, fellow believers. And that is what love looks like and what it does. So before we get into 1 John, we're going to be in chapter 4 today. We're going to finish up and and begin chapter 5. Before we get into that, let's just bow our heads in a word of prayer. Lord, we just come before you this morning, and Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given to us. Lord, uh, I know uh, this month is a busy month. Lord, we're just hustling, bustling, and there are just um, a lot of events happening, not just here at at the church, but just in the community around us, Lord. And I just pray that this morning that you would help us, uh, me especially, Lord, just to take a step back, just to take a deep breath, and just allow you to speak to us and, and to our hearts. Lord, I just pray that each and every one of us would be open to what you have for us today, Lord, and and that we wouldn't just hear what you have for us, but that we would do, that we would follow you. Lord, I just pray that your word would be alive in us today. In Jesus' name, amen. So this morning, as we're talking about love, we're going to be talking about God as well, and how, because of love, that we can know God through love. If you want to know more about God, we need to know more about love. And where does love come from? God. And God gives love. God gives love. Let's read verse 7 of 1 John chapter 4. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. You know what this is? This is regifting. How many of you have ever regifted a gift? Okay, I have. You've gotten, gotten something, right? And then you've given it to somebody else. Now, there is an art to regifting. There are some rules of regifting. One of the main rules is if you received a gift from a certain group of people, make sure if you regift it, 
it cannot go back to that group. It's got to go to a different group. Because when they open it up, if you end up giving it to the same group, and they open up, the, hey, didn't I give that to you two or three years ago or what have you? Yeah. But with love, that is a gift that we should re-gift. Love comes from God. And do we keep it all to ourselves or do we give it out to others? We give it out. You know, well, that's one of the great things about the gift of love is when you give it to somebody else, do you ever run out of God's love? You don't. So that's fantastic. You can just keep giving it and giving it and giving it. You never run out because love comes from God. And does God ever run out of love and say, hey, sorry, I gave you, I gave you a bunch of love last year. I'm not going to give you any more. You've used it all up. No, he doesn't. So love comes from God. He gives it. So, and if God gives you love, does that mean that's a good thing? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Not only does God give love, but God is love. God is love. Verse 8. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. God is love. Now we need to remember John, when he's writing this, this um, letter, what does he say God is back in chapter 1, verse 5? God is what? It's another L word. Do you remember? God is light. God is light. So God is not just love. God is light, which John uses light in the sense of holiness and righteousness. And remember how we as believers should not walk in darkness, but we should walk in the light. We shouldn't live a life of sin, but of holiness and righteousness. And we can't live in the dark and say we live in the light at the same time because does light and dark, do they mix? No, no, they don't. And so when we say God is love, yes, God is love. But is God just love? Is love his, own, his only characteristic? No. He's also holy. He's also righteous. And so we need to remember that. And John's going to mention it again. And I'm, I'm going to say it again. Why does John mention love so many times? I think it's because he knows his audience. Sometimes people can be a little pig-headed. And there's two types of people in here. Those who admit it and those who don't. Because we can all be stubborn sometimes. And sometimes we need a reminder. Sometimes we need multiple reminders. So John, because he's mentioning, mentioning that we need to love, 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 so many times. Do you think it's important for us? Who here needs to ever be reminded that we need to love others? Yeah, God is love, and, and love comes from him. But not only that, God shows love. He shows love. Let's read verses 9 and 10. It says, In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Right? God shows us what love is. Not, that he, not just that he sent his son, but he loved us first. He loved us first. How, how encouraging is that, that God loved you first? How many of you, maybe you remember your, your dating years? And maybe, you know, mostly guys, but I'm sure girls face this too. I, I'm a guy, so I'm going to talk from that perspective. How hard was it going up to that girl and saying you liked her, you were interested in her? Or that first phone call, were you nervous about that? I was. When, when Naomi and I, even when I was older and Naomi and I 
started talking, I kind of danced around because I didn't know how she felt about me. So I was a little nervous. Like, do I say anything? Or like, what if I say something and she rejects me? That, I, I, I scared, nervous. But now, do I, am I nervous now when I call her? Or am I nervous now when I say, I love you? Not usually unless I'm in trouble because I did something I, I shouldn't have done. But it's different. Why? Because I know she loves me. God loves you. Right? While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So God's already said, hey, I'm interested in you. Hey, I love you. I died for you. We don't have to be timid when we come to God. Be like, oh, I, I sure hope he likes me. You know, maybe it's a first date and we're like, oh, I can't show everything. I got to slowly ease them into my life because if I just show them everything all at once, they're going to run away screaming and say, this person's a nut job. God's already said that he loves you. He's already shown it. How? He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you. Man, is that, isn't that powerful? Guys, if, if, you were, if you were dating dating and a girl sacrificed something for you, would you be like, oh, I wonder if she likes me? Would you be wondering that? Or would you be like, hey, she likes me. She did this. For me. God did the same thing. He demonstrated. And that's what he's doing. He also demonstrates love. He doesn't just show us that he loves us, but he, he demonstrates it. Verse 11, which ties all into us. His beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another, right? God demonstrates this. If God showed us how he loved us by sending his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins, he demonstrates how should we love others with the same kind of love. And that's how other people can know God. We as believers, we're responsible for that. When, when we tell people, that we're a Christian, that we believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior, are they going to watch how we act? If we tell people that we're, that we're a Christian, we believe in Jesus, and they want to find out more uh, about God, they're going to look at our lives. And if our lives are no different than the world around us, what is going to be their impression? They're, they're not going to know who God is because because we're not being examples of that. And that's, and that's what John is saying. He's like, we can know God through his love. Because why did Jesus come to earth? Was it because, oh, you know, I have nothing better to do? No, why did he come? It's all because of love. All because of love. And people can see God through love. Can see God through love. They see God's character. Verse 12, no one has ever seen God. I'm going to add this in. However, if we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. No one has ever seen God, but they see God through you. How many of you have ever seen a child act a certain way and you look at them and you're like, oh, you are just like your father or your mother have you ever experienced that? When I was younger, I had a nickname. It was Little Hermie. Little Hermie. Why? Because I have a grandfather, and his name is Herman. And apparently, when I was younger, I would say things, I would do things, and people wouldn't see me in those moments as David. They would see my grandfather. When we as believers love others the way that we should, people don't see you. They see God. Isn't that amazing that God has used you as one of his representatives so that people can see what God is like? That's a, it's amazing. And you know what I'm talking about. You, have you ever been compared to somebody else? Has somebody ever said, wow, you are just like, sometimes it's a good thing. 
other times, maybe not. But God's character is love. And so when we love others, people see God. When we do not love others, do people see God? No. And we fail. Even this morning, I was reminded, somebody came up to me and said, Pastor, you know, you've been talking about love. And you know what? Last week, what you said wasn't very kind. It wasn't love at all. And, and I, I did apologize, right? Okay. I, I, sometimes I like to tease with people. And I think she knew I was, you knew I was teasing, right? Yeah, she knew I was teasing. But still, that's something I need to be careful about. It's something I need to watch. Because sometimes I, I can tease and I can really hurt people. Because I'm not showing people what God's love looks like. And I need to. And that is something that I, honestly, I am working on. It's hard. It's hard. But I am working on it. And all of us should work on it. Because when, I, when people see me, I, I want them to see God. Don't you? Don't you want people? And, and maybe you know people. I know this one guy that when I look at him, I don't see him. I see God just because of his just mannerisms and, and just his speech. Now, I'm sure he's not perfect. I don't know him real, real well. But man, when I see him, I'm, I'm always excited to see him because I can just, it feels like I'm in God's presence. So we can see God's character through love. We can also see God's spirit. Verse 13, by this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. God's given us, we as, as believers, he's given us his, his spirit. And that's something too. Can non-believers love? Yes, they can. Why? How can they love? Well, because people are made in somebody's image. Do you know whose image people are made of? God's image. Good, good answer. We're made in God's image. So people have, they have the, the ability to love, but it's limited. We, as believers, we can love beyond that because we have the Holy Spirit living in us. We can love in ways that a non-believer can't. God's spirit, also God's son. We can see God through love of his son. Let's read verses 14 to 16. It says, and we have seen and testify that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. There it is again. And whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. You see it there. We have, we have God. He's, he's demonstrated. He shows us what love looks like. And when we live like that, people can see him, and people can know him. And that's what I want to be known for. When, when people look at me, I want people to see me as a man. He, he was a, he, you could see God through his life. People knew what God was like because of how I lived my life. That's, that's my desire. Is that your desire? Is it going to come naturally? No, we struggle. We struggle. But this whole, this whole um, series on 1 John, you know, we're asking ourselves, like, am I saved? Am I saved? Can people know God by the way you live? Can people see God by the way you act? If the answer is yes, then yeah. I'm not going to say, I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm not the judge here, so I'm not going to say, yeah, you're definitely saved. But yeah, I would say you're saved. But if not... If people look at your life outside of Sunday morning when you're here and we're all perfect, right? If they see your life throughout the week and your life doesn't point to God, maybe you're not. Or maybe, maybe you're like me and there's times that you just struggle. 
but maybe you're not. And First John, John is just wanting his, his audience to know that they're saved. If you are saved, you will do this, this, and this. If you're not saved, you're going to do this, this, and this. Where do you fit? What are you, what are you doing? Another thing that love does for us, or just does, is love makes us strong. It makes us strong. It gives us confidence. Verse 17, it says, By this is love perfected in us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. Because God loves us, will, well, will there be a day of judgment? There will be. For just some of us or for all of us? For all of us. One day that's going to happen. However, and we, well, we also know that God loves everybody. We know that. We've, we've seen that already even in First John, that God loves everybody. God's given that gift. It's just not, not everybody's opened it up. And so we, as, as believers, if you're saved, you've opened that gift. You've received his love. Not just, it wasn't just offered to you. You actually received it by believing in Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now we don't have to worry about that judgment. Why? Because the price has already been paid. So because of that, we don't have to live in fear. We don't have to be afraid of God. Because fear is used, there's a couple different ways to, to interpret fear. One is reverence. When you fear somebody, it's, you have reverence for them. The other type of fear is dread. And I'm sure we felt both ways with police officers. Have you ever felt dread in front of a police officer? There was a time, this was in my youth, I did something that I, I regret doing. It wasn't completely legal. But I think it's past the statute of limitations, so I, I think I'm okay. Which is why I'm not being too descriptive, because I don't know. But as I was leaving, I looked in my mirror, and guess what I saw right behind me? A police officer. Oh my word. I have never felt dread like that before. Just act natural, just act natural, just act natural. Apparently he didn't see what I had done because I got away. But talk about dread. Now there's been other times where, where I've, I've even ridden, I've done a ride along with a police officer. Was I scared of him? No. I had respect for him. I was there because I appreciated what he was doing. I don't think it was the same person because he drove a different kind of, uh, kind of vehicle. But the fear, of, the fear of God as believers, what kind of a fear is that? Is it a dread? Do we have to, are, are we walking on, on thin ice when it comes to God? Oh, no, if I, if I make a wrong step, he's going he's gonna to get me. No. If we're not saved, should we be in fear? Yeah. As, as our speaker last night, Hebrews, it's a point under man. How many times, how many chances do we get? One. It's a point under man once to die. And after that, the judgment. We got to make that decision. We got to put our faith in Jesus Christ before we die. Because if we wait until afterwards, it's going to be too late. How many of us know when we're going to die? Nobody knows. And it doesn't matter how old or, or young you are. It can happen today. Did you know that we have deer in this area? And deer like to jump out in front of vehicles? How long does it take for a deer to jump out in front of your vehicle? Half a second. Maybe even a split second. I saw, I saw a dash cam of somebody who, who hit a deer. Well, he, 
it was crazy. No deer, boom, deer, deer gone. You know, it was just, it was just that quick, just that quick. He's fine, but, but we don't know. We think, we think we're going to live forever. We think that we're always going to have time, but we don't know. Love gives us confidence, and it casts out fear. It casts out fear. Verse 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. Are you afraid of dying? Maybe you're not looking forward to it. You know, the process, passing on from from life to death, can be a little scary. You know, there's ways that, man, if if I could choose how I leave this earth, I, I got a list. I would like to do this, this, and this. It's great. Are there ways that I would rather not leave this earth doing? Yeah. I don't know what it's going to be like for me. You don't know what it's going to be like for you. But it's going to happen. It's inevitable. It's been happening for generations. Something I I heard recently, that people, we just don't think about death. We, We think that we're going to escape it until... It happens until we're at the point where, wow, okay, it's real. It's real. But if we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and we know that he loves us and we experience that perfect love, do we have any fear? Should we have any fear? No. It's like those t-shirts back in the 90s, right? There's no fear. But it's not talking about that. No fear because of God's love. Not no fear if I'm going to do something ridiculous. No, we have no fear. Perfect love casts out fear, makes us strong. Love makes us strong because it gives us an example. God's given us an example. Verses 19 to 21. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother... This, is, this isn't a sibling. This is a, a fellow believer. Whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. He's given us an example of what love looks like. How hard is it to love fellow believers. Is it hard sometimes? Yeah, because sometimes believers do things that just kind of make you angry. Now, we should love everyone, but, but John here is talking specifically believers. Because if we say, God is love, I love God, I hate him, does that make any sense? It makes zero sense at all because love comes from God. God is love. And if I say I love God, I should do what he wants. And if he loves you, guess who has to love you too? Me. Which means you have to love me. Ha ha. Joke's on you. No. (laughs) But seriously, when the world looks at a church or a group of Christians that are spending time fighting one another, hating one another, canceling one another, is that showing God's love? If John were here today, he would, he, he, would he say, man, you guys are doing great. This is exactly what I was talking about when I wrote 1 John. Would he be like, guys, read my book. <laughs> Read my letter and follow it. So many times I look around and and it's it's easy for me. Man, they're not doing right. They're not loving. They're not loving. But I, I need to look at my own life. I need to, if if I say I love God, I need to love you. 
I need to. Because I can't say God is love. I can't say I love God and yet I hate you. What kind of an example is that for, for the world to see? It's not a good one. And I hope that if you are a believer, if you're in this room or, or if you're home watching, I hope your desire is to be a light, is to show people what love really is, what love really looks like. God gave us an example to follow. That's the example that we need to follow. Love gives us faith. Our last point here, chapter 5, the first five verses. Love gives us faith to love God. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Son of, is the Christ, has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. So how, how does faith give us the, the ability to love God? God loves us first. That's why he sent his Son. And our faith is in his Son, in Jesus Christ. Jesus is here because of his love for us. And we have faith because of Jesus Christ. So if God didn't love us, would he have sent Jesus Christ to this earth to die for us? No. The only way we can have faith is because of his love. If he didn't love us, we wouldn't be here today. If he didn't love us, we would have no idea who he was. I mean, we could look outside, we could look at creation, and we could know that, man, somebody did something. Because there's no way this all happened by accident. No way. But it's because of love that we can have faith. Love gives us faith to follow God, verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God, and obey his commandments. Right? Gives us faith. We need that faith in order to obey God's commandments. Is it hard for you to follow God's commandments? Or is it a drudge? How do you know if you love somebody? You'll do what they ask. Somebody, and, and think of it, the person you love the most, they ask you, let's just say do the dishes. Will you do them? Yeah, if you love that person, you'll do them. What if it's somebody you don't like? And they say, hey, would you please do the dishes for me? Would you do them? Or would we say, no, forget you. I'm not doing that. If we say we love God, are we going to do what he wants us to do? Yes, because that's, that's what love is. Not only does faith right, help us to follow God, but it helps us even to pursue God. Verse 3, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not, what, burdensome. It's not burdensome. Think about, guys, think about, I'm talking about dating a lot today. But when you're dating your girl or she asks you to do something, do you do it? Yeah, you, don't even, you may not even think twice about it. You just do it. It's not burdensome. You want me to stay up all night talking to you? Yeah, I'll do it. Not a problem. You want me to do this? I got it. No issue. It may be a little harder now. <laughs> we talked last night. What do you mean we got to talk again tonight? Your time is up. I don't say that. Right, honey, I don't say that? Okay, good. Whew. I just got myself in trouble there. But love, if we love God, that love shouldn't be burdensome. What do you mean I got to do this? What do you mean I got to do that? No. We should be happy to do it. If you really love God, you're going to pursue him. You're, you're just going to go, and it's not going to be burdensome at all. You're not going to be, oh, I, I got to do this again. It's like you're wearing a, 20 pounds of, of rocks in your, in your sack. No, it's going to be, yeah, I'll do it, no problem. If you love God, you'll pursue him. Also, 
Love gives us faith to defeat sin. Verses 4 and 5. It says this, it says, For everyone who has been born of God, right, Christians, overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. He starts out this passage, Jesus is the Messiah. He's the Christ. He's also the Son of God. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior and you are tempted to sin, do you have to give in? No. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Right? There's no temptation that is taking you, but such as is common to everybody. But with every temptation, God says what? There's no way out. You've got to give in to it. Does he say that? No. But will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it? It doesn't matter what you're tempted in. It doesn't matter how bad and evil and wicked and sticky it is. Guess what? We've all been tempted like that. We just don't want to tell anybody because we're ashamed of, of our temptations. But just because you're tempted doesn't mean you have to follow through with it. Why? Because God loves us. He sent us his son to die on the cross for our sins and rose again. And the, he walked on earth. And then he left. And then who did he send? The Holy Spirit living inside of us. It gives us the strength and the power that we need to overcome the temptations and trials of this world. See, if you don't have that faith, you don't have that power. Yeah, you may say no to some temptations, but when we look at the world and we see the, just the, the evil sins, and they're all evil, but the ones that we call, man, those, that's really bad. If they don't have Jesus Christ as their Savior, if they don't have the Holy Spirit living in them, it's going to be extremely difficult to say no. To, to those temptations. I mean, we have temptations. You ever you struggle with something that's hard for you to say no? Yeah, probably. I don't know you. I don't know what you do when, when you're not here. But do we have to say yes to our temptations? No. No, not if you have faith that Jesus Christ is Lord. So, are you saved? Can others know God by looking at your life? Can others see who God is, his character, by looking at how you live your life? Do you personally, how do you, how do you live your life? How do you, how do you see it? Are you able to resist temptation because of your faith in him? Is it a burden to follow God? Or is it a joy to serve him? Answer those questions honestly. It may give you an indication of whether or not you're saved. Let's pray.